What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we have a brand new microphone hitting the market. We'll be reviewing the new NZXT capsule. So, NZXT getting into the audio game. So if you're looking to pick up a new microphone for gaming, streaming, anything like that, we'll go over it all. The build, features, pros and cons, and obviously do a sound test so you can hear how it sounds. Plus, at the end, we'll do a comparison to three other microphones out there right now at a similar price point so you can gauge how it sounds and stacks up to the competition. So first things first, this retails for $129.99, which fits right in with the other microphones out there right now in the market. And really, for the specs and feature set this has, it is more than a fair price. Getting it unboxed and set up is a breeze. It's all plug and play, so no drivers or software are needed. But my first impression was it's a really nice and clean design. It reminds me of the aesthetic of their H1 case and their headset they teased a while back. This unit I have is black and I did see they're also making a white version and who knows if we'll get other color options later on down the line. But the mic is made of an ABS shell with an all aluminum stand that definitely provides the heft when you hold it. So I think, you know, clean and simple design for sure. And I like the fact that it doesn't scream gamer, you know? Also speaking build and construction, inside the microphone is a built-in shock mount and pop filter behind the front grille, which will help improve the overall sound from the 25 millimeter cardioid capsule inside. They said it's tuned for vocals, and with it being cardioid, it's aimed to eliminate background noise on your desktop, but we'll test the quality in a little bit. The capsule is also rated at 24-bit, 96,000 hertz resolution, which only a few other gaming mics out there currently have as well. So a bit of a leg up on most of the competition. On the front of the capsule itself, we have two buttons for controlling gain and others for adjusting the volume of your headphones if you choose to plug it in directly to the mic to monitor your audio as a pass-through, which you can right there on the bottom. You can also note the USB-C port and inside's an internal amplifier to power your headphones up to 16 ohms and odds are you'll be able to power your cans just fine. And then when the mic is powered on, you'll see a light ring around the bottom shine white to let you know it's good to go. Now, if you want to mute the microphone real quick, all you have to do is press in the top dial. That'll quickly kill the mic, and you'll see the white power ring on the bottom now turn red so you actually know it is muted. But one thing about those two dials that I personally don't like is the fact that they are infinite scrolling rotary encoders, meaning there are no hard stops when it's at zero or 100% volume. They just keep scrolling and scrolling. The top volume button also feels kind of loose. Maybe it's because you can also press it in, like I said. I just really wish those buttons had hard stops and felt a bit more premium, not so wobbly. And the last note about the physical features, the stand itself is very solid and where most of the weight comes from with it being aluminum, as I said before, and it stands five and a quarter inches tall or around 135 millimeters from base to the top of the arm where it locks it into place. And the bottom underneath is all rubberized, so it won't move around or slide on your desktop. It is rather limited in terms of flexibility as it only moves around 120 degrees before the bottom hits the stand again. So you wanna use your own boom arm or their boom arm, you don't wanna use the stock stand. On the back is this quick release button. So you press it in and this whole thing pops right out. No having to undo screws or washers, anything like that. Really quick and easy. And it also comes with a little cover here. So say you do put it on a boom arm and you don't want this back to be completely open like that. You can just put this cover in, make it all nice and flush. But yeah, super simple, nice and easy, clicks right in. Now, like I said before, the comparison and sound test we're gonna do right now to three other gaming microphones. And we're doing this just to give you a general idea of how it sounds and stacks up to other options on the market. So we're gonna be comparing the capsule to the Elgato Wave, the HyperX Quadcast S, and the Rode NT-USB Mini. So we'll do the full sound test now of the capsule. I'll intro each mic, and at the end, we'll do them all back to back to back to back. Okay, this is the mic test for the NZXT capsule. All raw, unedited audio, so you can hear directly how it sounds coming out of the mic with no changes or alterations. And this is a cardioid pickup pattern, so it's picking up my voice directly in front of it, not behind it or to the sides. We will do a background typing test and an ambient noise test in just a bit. But the mic stand is kind of on the shorter side, so I'm definitely kind of like hunched over a bit, so it picks up my voice. And I'm about, I'd say, six to eight inches away from the mic. Now the capsule is capable of 24-bit, 96,000 hertz sample rate when recording, which is double the average, you know, gaming microphone out there of 48,000 hertz. 96 is starting to become more popular, but 48 is still the norm. But now you have the option to record at 96 instead, and that's going to be, you know, best and great for people doing voiceovers or podcasting, for example, because with 24-bit, 96,000 hertz sample rate, you have much more depth and detail when it comes to post-production and editing that audio. You just have, you know, more room to push it. Think of it kind of like video resolution with 48,000 hertz being like 1080p and 96,000 hertz being 4k. 
even though we're not like doubling it exactly, um, it's just like, you know, the quality difference is the example there. More pixels, more depth, more detail at 96,000 hertz. But funny enough, the audio you're hearing right now, um, I'm not even recording at 96,000 hertz. I'm at 48,000 hertz because Adobe Premiere Pro only takes 48,000 input max. And that's what I use to record and edit all my video and audio stuff. And same goes for most other editing or streaming programs out there. Like you can't record at 96,000 hertz in Streamlabs, I don't think. So again, 48, still the norm, but you do have that capability with the NZXT capsule. Now, one of the things I mentioned before, and I personally just can't stand it, is the fact that this does not have a hard stop for the volume. So the infinite scrolling, I think, is just like dumb because unless you have a real-time meter in front of you or some sort of visualizer, you're not going to know what your levels are like. And, you know, I just... I don't know. It, it pisses me off because I like to sort of give like a level that I recommend it sounds best at. So in my PC sound settings, I have it at 75, but I don't know what the actual microphone is outputting because there's no hard stop. And, you know, I'd also like to say like, yeah, it sounds best at like 11 o'clock. If you think of it, you know, like a, the face of a clock, it's just a hassle of not having a hard stop. So, you know, I want to know what I'm sort of at before I hit record. If I want to turn it to a certain level on the mic itself, I'll have a general idea of where I'm at. Now, most levels do have a meter, so you can see, but for like beginners or someone recording without a meter, it's just going to be trial and error, listening back and, you know, trying to figure out if it's peaking or if it's too quiet or what changes you should make. And yeah, you know, you can just plug in headphones on the bottom, like I said before, sure, but you're still not going to have a reliable reading of a decibel you're at or if you're peaking or anything like that. Also, uh, by the way, my headphones are quarter inch, so... Now, I will do the mic comparison in just a minute, and I'll give you the full breakdown of how I think this sounds, but my first just quick impressions is it's very full sounding, and I get a lot of warmth from it. So, so far, so good. Now, real quick, I'll do a typing test, followed by a five second background test. You can hear just how it sounds at an ambient level in my room without me speaking, so you can gauge you know, the, the background audio and stuff. Um, in terms of background audio elimination, I'd say definitely pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the, the keyboard is definitely kind of close in proximity. And these are tactile switches, so they're going to be a bit on the louder side. Uh, but it's currently right now on the East Coast. You know, Hurricane Ida's coming up, and it's been downpouring all day. And I have a bay window maybe like uh, eight feet to my right. And uh, I don't think you can hear that because I, I was watching the levels while I was recording, and it was down, you know, past minus 57 decibels. So, so far so good. Okay, so the next mic for this comparison is going to be the HyperX Quadcast S. And they do have an original Quadcast model without the S. The difference is about like 20 bucks. So this range is anywhere from like 115, 120 to 140. Uh, they're both the same exact capsule and microphone. The difference now being the Quadcast S has the RGB, as you can see going on. So that's what you're paying for. Uh, this microphone, however, is 16 bit, 48,000 hertz. So again, uh, not the 24 bit, 96,000 hertz from the NZXT capsule. Another thing I want to point out with this before we get into the back to back to back to back comparison with the other mics is going to be the fact that this has four different uh, pickup patterns that are possible but to keep it you know consistent with the uh, comparison I have this currently on the cardioid pickup pattern just so it's a more you know reliable comparison now is the mic test for the Elgato Wave 1. Uh, they also have the Wave 3. This is the more budget-friendly option, again, to keep in line with the price of the NZXT capsule. This launched for 130 MSRP, but again, I've seen it cheaper, just around like uh, 120 and below. And this came out close to a year ago at this point, probably a little bit uh, longer, uh, but also a very you know competitive mic in this range because it's Elgato. Uh, they're known for their streaming uh, hardware and peripherals, so this right in line also really great with their wavelength software uh, so really good stuff here and for this one it is 24 bit 48,000 hertz sample rate so the same resolution as the NZXT capsule but again this one's capped at 48,000 hertz also take note I do have this sort of elevated and on like a like a little thing to prop it up because the mic is very short on here so you're probably definitely gonna want some sort of arm because it's just super short 
And then lastly, for our comparison, this is the Rode NT Mini USB. And very much living up to its name, Super Mini. This microphone is very small. As you can see, I have it propped up on two sort of makeshift stands here. And uh, a very small and compact mic. But... Rode is, you know, known for being great, you know, bang for your buck. They're not like a gaming company like NZXT, um, you know, Elgato and HyperX, but Rode definitely more known in the audio game. Uh, just great microphone options out there for their price because this comes in at just $99, which is definitely the cheapest on this list. And again, talking specs, it's still cardioid. It's 24-bit, 48,000 hertz sample rate. So specs on par with some of the other ones out there at a very affordable price. And this is the mic test for that. Look at this photograph. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. How did our eyes get so red? And what the hell is on Joey's head? And this is where I grew up. I think the present owner fixed it up. I never knew we ever went without. That makes no sense, Nickelback. The second floor is hard for sneaking out. <laughs> and this is where I went to school. Most of the time had better things to do. Criminal record says I broke in twice. I must have done it a half dozen times. I wonder if it's too late. Should I go back and try to graduate? Life's better now than it was back then. If I was them, I wouldn't let me in. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, God, I. Every memory of looking out the back door. I had the photo album spread out on my bedroom floor. It's hard to say it. It's time to say it. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, so personally, I think the NZXT capsule sounds really, really good out of the box. Just very nice and warm, full bodied. And in terms of background elimination, when I was actually typing with the keyboard right behind it, I thought that was gonna be very, very loud, but it was coming in like right around negative 42 decibels. So it does a great job at eliminating that. You couldn't hear the storm hitting the window at all. So background elimination, very good. And just the vocal clarity, I think, was great stock out of the box. And with it being able to record 96,000 hertz sample rate, you have so much extra room and leeway now to, you know, edit in post-production, to really, you know, push the vocals when it comes to editing and getting the most out of it if you choose to record at that, even though my sound test was at 48,000 hertz, and I think it sounds just very, very good still. Now, I will say uh, the Wave 1 also sound very good, probably the closest sounding to it. And um, that's just gonna be a matter of, you know, up to you and your opinion if you wanna check out uh, a review of the Wave microphones or the other Wave, uh, the Wave 3 as well. Uh, you can, you know, see what feature set's more important to you. But like I said, I'm just very impressed with the sound quality for 130 right now. Pros, I think it's built really nice, nice and clean, sounds very good. Obviously, you have the pass-through underneath or uh, plugging in headphones with the built-in amplifier, which is always cool to see. And um, this, yeah, the sound quality is the most important thing when it comes to a microphone, right? And I do have to say, for me, I mentioned it twice already, the biggest con by far, the biggest bummer, is the fact you have those infinite rotary dials here. I understand to some people it might not be a big deal if you are monitoring real time before you record. It's still just a hassle of not knowing where your audio levels are before you plug in and start recording. At least having a hard stop at zero or 100 will give you that personal general idea of what your audio is gonna be like. So I just really wish that was changed and improved going forward. But all in all, for 130, very, very good. It doesn't have the most features out there, you know, there's no four different pickup patterns. We're limited to just cardioid, but honestly, for most vocal recording use cases, that's what you're gonna want is cardioid. Not omnidirectional, nothing else like that. Uh, cardioid's what you want. So I'm fine having no RGB, no other stuff like that. The feature set here, I think is appropriate for 130, and the sound's all you really care about, right? So I definitely recommend it. It'll be interesting to see if we do get different colors down the line, you know, like to match their cases and stuff like that. I know they have like blue, red, uh, purple even. So I like the white and black, but we'll see if they drop more colors. That'd be cool. But that'll wrap it up for my review and overall sound test and comparison of the NZXT capsule. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to check it out, I'll have a link for you in the description down below, as well as the other three mics that I featured in case you want to, you know, do your own homework and comparisons to see the feature sets and all that stuff and how it stacks up to this if you are more interested in getting the most for your uh, bang for your buck, you know? So yeah, hope you all enjoyed. If you liked this review, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. 
feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.